I've been obsessed with J.K. Rowling's Wizarding World since I was seven years old, you know, and it's been a guiding mythology in my life. Uh, so this in many ways has felt like the fulfillment of dreams more than anyone can usually ever imagine or hope for. Credence is a part of this society that is trying to stamp out irregularity in the human race. That's the idea. And he, is, he was um, adopted into that world by a foster mother. Eddie is, um, when you meet him, he's about as sweet and lovable as a human being can be. Uh, a really like honest, in, um, someone with a lot of integrity and just a lot of kindness, a lot of warmth. Um, and I think that Newt is that. Newt is that, that character that we really, we feel for. And he's a little, you know, he's befuddled and he's a little all over the place. He's a little disorganized. And I think we identify with that. And I think Eddie is not that. I think Eddie is actually a very organized and very on point person who's really good at his job. But I think he has brought a uh, sort of, yeah, wonderful light to... Uh, a character who is, yeah, who we love uh, despite sort of his faults and his bumbling ways. The thing you have to understand about David Yates is he'll give you a note and then he will not walk back to the monitor. He won't even run back to the monitor. He will bound. He leaps. So this is a brief example. His, oh, all right, we're gonna do that. And he's snapping his fingers and his eyes are actually glowing, uh, sort of a phosphorescent glow. And you can just feel this, uh, he's so excited to be engaging in this material. I mean, unbelievable, unbelievable energy, uh, unbelievable amount of excitement. And that is contagious. Not, not just for actors, for everyone on the crew. And the kindness, the kindness and the care that he brings to a set is again, it's contagious. It's just so beautiful, it's just so imaginative, and it's so provocative, and it just, I mean, every page and every little detail with regard to the designing of the language around this world, even, at the idea of, you know, um, you know, when you make yourself vanish in one spot and reappear in another, you know, it's disapparating and then apparating somewhere else. It's just beautiful, there's just kind of a poetry to it and a symmetry to everything that she... And again, it seems you read the stuff and it seemed really simple and like, of course, of course, disapparate. He's highly skilled, he's incredibly well trained and, and rather powerful. Not young wizard, but rather powerful wizard. Um, so kind of almost second in command to, to Madame Pickery, President Pickery, who's played by Carmen. Um, so he's very high up in Makusa, he would be very well respected. In this film he's very proactively chasing this mystery that is kind of running amok across New York City. This, we don't know what at the start of the film, whether it's a beast or a spirit or an entity or what it is. Um, and that's kind of his job is to, before there is chaos kind of set free totally in New York City and, and, and a war is, is kind of provoked between nomadges and, and wizard kind. He wants to find this creature that's causing destruction and, and uh, put it to rest. Watching David work with all the actors and seeing how he digs and digs and digs to find the truth of the characters, but really does, and what the emotional and the psychological uh, experience or viewpoint of every particular character at every particular moment is. And so while the world is fantastical and while it is a world of magic and wizardry and, and um, a world of kind of the expansiveness of the imagination as a result of JK's work, it's also grounded in a reality that humanistically is very relevant.